all, I knew that George Bush was a war criminal. I knew that my son should still be alive. I knew that there was, we shouldn't have gone into Iraq or Afghanistan because of 9-11. I knew that 9-11 was exploited to be the cause of deaths and destruction and homelessness for so many people. One thing I didn't know was that the White House press corps follows George Bush everywhere, even when he goes on vacation. And Crawford, Texas is probably one of the most boring places on the face of the earth, right? There's never anything happening there. And so, and especially a long, hot summer. So there was actually something happening there. And that's why they started to cover it. But you know what? The press at first thought I was just by myself. They thought that I was just, you know, an anomaly. They thought that I was something unusual. But then they saw thousands of people come to Crawford, Texas. And by the end of the summer, we had 17,000 people visit us in Crawford, Texas. We had hundreds of uh, solidarity vigils. You guys might have had one here. All over the world we had solidarity vig vigils. And I wasn't the only mother. There were other mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters who lost loved ones that came out and said, you know what, Cindy's not the only one that feels this way. Soldiers, vets came out to Crawford, Texas saying, Cindy's not the only one that feels this way. And then the media went, holy shit, Cindy's not the only one that feels this way. <laughs> we, we better like demonize her and the movement. And that's what started to happen. And I ran for Congress in 2008. Do any, did any of you hear about that? Well, not very many people did. And I ran not against, you know, Sam Smith, in Oklahoma, I ran against Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco. The person who's supposed to be this wild-eyed, raving liberal, who's not. I ran against her because she refused to stop paying for George Bush's wars, and she refused to hold him accountable. Miss Nancy impeachment off the table, Pelosi. That's why I ran against her, and the media didn't cover me. I was doing something I thought was like, what's more establishment than running for a federal office? What's more, you know, lends credibility than running for a federal office? But no, the media didn't, like, no national coverage and very little coverage in San Francisco. I ha and so, why? Why did that happen? Why is the movement all of a sudden curtailed. Why don't we get any more coverage? Because I know we're still working. I know, also know we don't have the numbers we used to, but I know we're still out there and I know that we're still out there trying. So thank goodness for the internet. Thank goodness for alternative media and other um, sources where we can get our information. Facebook, <laughs> for one. This is what our information education warfare has to be about. Even if it's just one young person at a time, even if it's just one mother at a, at a time. In one summer, I was able to reach millions of people with my message. You drop, a, you drop a boulder in a pond, you get a big splash. And sometimes it causes more of a mess. But she said, if you drop a pebble in that pond, and you be pebble people, and drop one pebble every day, it's going to keep having these ripple effects that are gonna have a more profound effect on, effect on the world. So if we can reach one mother at a time, one young person at a time, to try and build a society from the ground up that resembles our Beatitudes, that resemble the way we want things to be, not the way the, the corporatists want things to be, but the way we want things to be. That's when things are gonna change. And things can change that way. I fear, like last night, there was a very wise young lady at this um, event at the firehouse. 
And she's, she's in middle school. She's not here, I don't see her. She said that we can't change anything. We can't vote our way out of anything. But what we can do is work together in community to change things. Who, who can we follow? Who can be our leader? Who can guide us? You know, we like the easy way out. We want someone to tell us what to do. We want someone to show us what to do. And when it doesn't work, we want to say, ha ha, it's her fault. You know, but that leader, the, the person we're looking for is in our own skin. And one of the, one of the uh, most devious myths that they tell us is that we can't make a difference. You know, you're just one person. You can't make a difference. We, um, they should say, instead of you can't make a difference, everybody can make a difference. Every one of us sitting here has the potential and probably has already made profound differences in our world. And those are the differences that are going to change things. We thought in 2005, after Camp Casey and after Katrina, that the Bush administration was on its last legs. You know, people say, we got Bush out of office. No, you didn't. The Constitution got Bush out of office. You know, he was going that day, you know, whether or not, it doesn't matter who we elected, on January 20th, 2009, he was out of office. I wanted him out a lot sooner. I wanted him out of the Oval Office and into the Gray Bar Hotel where he belonged. That's, That's right. prison, by the way. Not just George Bush, he's just a figurehead. You know, so there's many people who deserve credit for the where our country is today.